from Paramount Pictures, it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you, Tom. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. So many of you have sent me this story, and you all want my opinion on it, so I'm going to give it to you. But uh, literally, I want to thank at least 100 people who sent this story in over the last three or four days. And, um, you know, I have to give the people what they want. Sometimes I look at a story and I say, isn't it obvious what I'm going to say? But apparently, there are sometimes people just want to hear me rant about something. They know I'm going to rant about it. So, okay. Dateline Chicago. An energy magnate's estranged wife was awarded one hundred and eighty-four million dollars what appears to be one of the biggest divorce verdicts in U.S. history, citing irreconcilable differences. Maya Polsky, a 55-year-old homemaker and art gallery owner, Filed for divorce from her husband, Michael Polsky, in 2003. Judge William Boyd had ruled in October that Maya Polsky was entitled to half of the Chicago couple's cash and assets with her share valued at $176 million. On Monday, the judge amended his decision to include previously omitted assets that increased the value of her award to $184 million. Maya Polsky's attorney, Howard Rosenfeld, said more than $170 million of the award is non-taxable cash. He said that in researching the case, he could find nothing in which a homemaker wife received such a significant award. Rosenfeld said... She's very much satisfied with the court's decision. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I thought maybe she was going to appeal and say that she deserved $300 million. Says here she thinks she was fairly treated by the court. The couple married in 1975 in Kiev in the Ukraine, and then part of, it was then part of the Soviet Union. They arrived in the United States in 1976 with only four suitcases and $500 in cash, according to court records. In 1980, they moved from Detroit to Chicago, where Michael Polsky found success in the energy business. Judges in Illinois have some leeway in determining how to split marital assets. Rosenfeld successfully argued that Maya Polsky was her 57-year-old husband's trusted confidant and therefore entitled to half the estate. Now listen to this. In court filings, this is what the uh, attorney uh, wrote about his client, Maya Polsky. He said they would walk together after dinners. And Michael would share details of his work, looking for empathy, advice, or merely an open ear. For many years, their marital partnership flourished. Michael provided sustenance and security. Maya provided love, support, advice, and counsel. What, what did she know about the energy business? She was a housewife. What kind of advice could she be offering? you got to be kidding me. He confided in her because he was her husband. Was she a business consultant? Did she have a business degree? Did she have a background in this area? 
I'll bet you in the course of time he had accountants and attorneys and people who had an education in the business of running a business who knew a lot more than Maya Polsky knew. They didn't get that kind of money. They listened to him also. They didn't walk hand in hand with him after dinner, but they uh, they they listened to him and they advised him and they knew what they were talking about. But she gets half of all the money. Michael Polsky's attorneys contended that he was responsible for the couple's great wealth and said he will likely appeal the decision. Attorney Joseph Teig said he intends to test this decision on appeal because he's always believed that this shouldn't have been a 50-50 split. Again, let's review. There are states that have what's called community property. Illinois is not one of them. The judge decided that it should be split 50-50, but that's not necessarily the law. The judge could say 60-40 or 75-25 if he so chose. Says here David Meyer, a law professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, said the Polsky case is, quote, remarkable and historic because of the size of the award and Boyd's decision to split the estate equally. Meyer said those are huge numbers. When you get these cases of extraordinary wealth, it really puts to the test this notion of marriage as a complete partnership. Gaetano Ferro, president of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, said he wasn't aware of a bigger award in the United States. Michael Polsky launched the company that would eventually become Northbrook-based SkyGen Energy, a leading independent power producer that sold in the year 2000 for about $450 million. He is now president and CEO of a company called Invenergy. Invenergy Wind LLC, a Chicago-based wind energy company. Um, I, I Look, I think that's an outrageous sum. But I do think that in this country, you pretty much know that when you get married without a prenup, boys, uh, that you're going to give up half of everything you've earned. And here's an example of what I tell you all the time. All the time. 50-50. Now, you know all you people who call up here and I ask, why don't you have a prenup? And you say, because I don't have anything. These people had nothing. When they got married, they had nothing. But just because you have nothing today doesn't mean you'll have nothing forever. Someday you might have something, and you might want it protected. You can't get married without a prenup. You can't. But this story is another example of why guys should not get married. You know, if Maya Polsky was uh, the girlfriend rather than the the wife, they could take walks after dinner, they could have conversations, they could confide in each other. But then when the relationship was over, he wouldn't have to pay $184 million. So this is definitely a very clear example of a case where if this guy hadn't gotten married or if he had insisted upon a prenuptial agreement to protect himself, he wouldn't be in the shape he's in today. It's hard to say don't split the stuff in half. i got to be honest with you. It's hard to say don't split the stuff in half because that's pretty much the way the law works in this country uh, is that if you're married and you've got no prenup, that they split it in half. That's what they do. If you don't want your stuff split in half, don't get married or insist upon a prenup that says, you know, you, uh, you take what you uh, what you brought into the marriage. That's what you take. And if you earned anything during the marriage, whoever earned it keeps it. Or if a woman wants to, to be compensated for the years she spends with a man, have her put it in writing at the beginning. How much do you want? How much are you entitled to? Maybe if this guy saw how much it would cost to have a wife, maybe he would have said, no, thanks. What's your reaction to this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's a good slogan for our show. Better than a fatal accident. The Tom Likas Show.
Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Tonight, we're talking about that amazing $184 million. Hundred and eighty, you hearing me? One hundred and eighty-four million dollar divorce judgment in Chicago. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to Aaron on the Tom Likas show. Aaron? Yeah, Tom. You busy over there? Nope. All right, let me uh, get uh, my calendar out here. When would you like to start talking? We'll make an appointment. Oh, sorry, Tom. I must have been, uh, I don't know, flossy and some static. Um, I just want to say I'm a longtime listener, big fan. Um, I think one of the reasons guys make this decision is because they don't want to admit that it could be wrong. It's not always a logically-based decision. It's an emotionally-based decision. And they men are usually more logical than women, and... Because they failed to make that connection, they tried to use logic to make their decision about the prenup. And obviously, you pointed the hole in that logic very easily just now. And uh, obviously, the, I hear you all the time talking about how divorce numbers are up and the different ways you cross-reference divorce statistics. And they're very enlightening and very intelligent ways to look at it. But guys themselves don't want to admit that they're part of that standard divorce number. And uh, it's it's not, like I say, it, may, it might not be the deepest logically based decision, but they try to commit logic wherever they can. And marriage is just, it's a very hard thing to go into it saying that there's a possibility for failure, because that's kind of like a... Uh, yeah, if there was a 45% chance that you would have an on, a, a, a head-on collision in your car, would you drive today? <laughs> no. No, I wouldn't. If there was a 45% chance that you would be murdered walking down a particular street, would you walk down a different street? Yeah, statistically, you're, you're perfect. That's why I'm such a huge fan of you and your show. You you help guys out, and, yeah, I think things have been slanted for way too long. And uh, I agree with you 100% on your statistics, and I just appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, Aaron. Hey, Tom. Um I was just wanted to mention something. I know you're an atheist. I'm a big fan of that aspect of your character, too, and that's why I'm also a huge fan of your show. I wanted to ask if you've ever heard of a book called God is Not Great. No. Um, I just read it. I lost a family member back in Michigan, and I spent a lot of time on an airplane, and uh, I got through eight chapters of this stuff. And I'm not a huge reader, and uh, if you ever hear of it and you get a chance to pick it up, it's, it makes all of the points that you make with such stunning wit and great intelligence and uh, i have no doubt you'd love this book it's by a guy named christopher hitchens and if you ever if you read it i wouldn't be surprised if you maybe spent an hour just discussing some of the points they make in it about how religions are very outdated and i think this plays into this stuff you're talking about right now too marriage and divorce and marriage have to go hand in hand people use it once again it's a faith-based faith-based decision to get married and uh the the way faith plays into that is often destructive and the the subtitle of the book is called how religion poisons everything and i know you're not far off about that sort of uh mentality so if you get a chance thanks for taking my call and if you could blow me up i'd be a happy happy boy of course i can one eight hundred five eight hundred tom that's our telephone number justin on the tom like his show hello tom first time long time cool uh, let's see. Well, what I was going to tell you is that um, I'm 24, and I started dating a girl back when I was in, when I was 19. wasn't listening to what you had to say. And uh, I was with her for four years, and she basically uh, did never fessed up to the fact that she had an alcohol problem. And, uh, you know, I just kind of dealt with it, being an idiot, you know. And, and uh really... I just kind of had enough of it, you know, listening to you every day on, at work and stuff just kind of worked on me. So I finally kicked that bitch to the curb, and, and uh, it was kind of like a little miniature divorce. Uh, you know, things were split up, and she took some of the DVDs and, and some of the, the furniture and whatnot, and she wanted, she wanted me to pay her for the TV that we both went in on, and uh, instead I just gave it to her. And let her deal with trying to sell it to her boyfriend, and her boyfriend never, uh, never paid her for it, which I kind of got a good laugh out of that. But, um, that was enough for me to know that I am never, 
ever. If I ever get married, I'm I'm going to do it, and it's going to have to be with a prenup. And why but, even do it? Well, exactly. I mean, you know, I've thought of that too. And, and but you know, kind of down in the deep recesses of my of my brain, I think I might want kids. But you know, with the way things are going in the world, I'm kind of doubting that. I completely understand, Justin. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Italo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Before I get started, I just want to let you know you uh, popped my uh, live radio phone call, uh, Cherry. So I hope you're proud. Wow. Anyways, um, don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. <laughs> I believe you said he got married in the Ukraine, right, in the seventies. Yes. Okay, now would that even be valid? Do they even have prenups then, and would it be valid here in the United States? Uh, that's an attorney question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, as far as where they got married, uh -huh. um, that has nothing to do with a divorce uh, uh, settlement or a divorce judgment. Uh, it, what matters is where you get divorced. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I mean, I just think unless unless her name was on that paycheck as well, she doesn't deserve any part of it. Well, um, I I agree, but again, the, unfortunately, the the law says that yeah. uh, uh, essentially you guys have combined your assets. Once you get married, you've merged two companies. Is what you've done, and that sucks. Well, but I, I think a lot of people when they get married, they have this attitude. We hear from them all the time. They call in and they say, "Well, I'm not going to get a prenup. I'm not going to ask my girlfriend for a prenup because we don't have anything anyway." But then you hear a story like this: where these two people had nothing when they got married. Yeah. And look at them now. In a couple suitcases, right? right. Yep. <laughs> and now look at them. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. Can you take me out to thank you, Jesus? Of course I can. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you, Jesus. It's Christian on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. I was listening to you about the guy who got a divorce. Are we supposed to feel pity for a man that has $180 million in his bank account? Well, as a man, uh, your concern ne shouldn't necessarily be feeling sorry for that particular person. But your concern should be that no matter whether it's $184 million or 184000 or whatever it is, uh, if you get married without a prenuptial agreement, you're going to give away half of everything you have. I uh, I understand that, and I see how that works. And that, well, I don't think everybody. Nice, I don't think I don't think everybody understands that. It, it just seems funny that. By you know, the way, the in my my view, my view, my million. view, I don't care. You know what? In my view, look, I'm a multimillionaire myself. Uh, that doesn't mean that the money is there to be given away to other people who didn't do anything to earn it. No, true, but, you know, his wife was there for, what, 30 Being, years being there doesn't mean... So Not what? That Plenty that of people were there. I just I just thought it was funny that $180 million bucks was... The fact that someone... kind of ridiculous. And she, what's she going to do with all that money? Well, she's just taking it from him. That's what it's all about. Sick. Oh, that's hey, what can it... you take me out uh, African tribal style? Uh, sure, I can. <sighs> I didn't want to have a conversation. Every time I tried to say something, you just you just get plowing ahead. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Ryan. Hey Tom, how's it going? Great. All right, listen to your show for a while now. You're doing a great job there, man. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to let you know there's a, also a paperwork uh, uh, thing that you can get after you're done um, with all your prenups and everything, and you can actually get a post. Um, agreement after you're done being married and said if you start to get a lot of money you open up a business or whatever yeah well here, here's the problem with those there's not a lot of history with them uh, and we do not know how well they will stand up in court I was told by uh, a prepaid legal service here that will remain nameless here in Sacramento they actually told me that that 
stands up in court at just as much as a prenup. Well, I am, I've never done that. Yeah, well, you know, of course, the prepaid legal service probably wants you to use their services. But sure. um, my, what I have heard from top-notch, heavy-hitting divorce attorneys is that there's there's quite a history now with prenups, but not post-nuptial agreements. One thing about a prenuptial agreement is that you can't sign it under duress. Hmm. But what's more duress than the fact that you're already locked in the marriage with somebody, and then they confront you with this piece of paper to sign? Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm dubious about post-nups, and uh, I would certainly consult an attorney about it, but I'm dubious about them. Well, what if you had a wife that doesn't really care... Well, maybe she does care, but doesn't let you know that she actually does care. That that if you did sign the paper with her, that you know, I don't, you know, what if she doesn't care that that you make all this money and and she doesn't make this money, but you have her sign it anyway? Well, I think the important thing is to get a prenup. I mean, why are people not getting prenups? It doesn't make any sense. Because people are broke, brother. They're not making any money, and once they start making money. You know, then I think it would be the appropriate time to... Then believe me, uh, you know what? What people don't understand, everyone's penny-wise and found foolish. Uh, they don't realize that the $5,000 you spend on a good prenuptial agreement today is going to save you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars down the line. Those are $5,000? A good one, yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know they were that expensive. A good one, yes. Wow. Maybe that's one of the reasons, too, because people don't have the money, so why are they going to spend I don't agree that they don't have the money. People waste money on all kinds of crap. I see people walking around with $500 PDAs and people who are driving cars with GPS in the car and everything. I mean, people have all kinds of gadgets. They spend all kinds of money. They've got $500 iPods. Do you want to hookers? Well, yeah. I mean, that's just me, but... Um, you know, if you can wanna... afford that stuff, you can afford a prenuptial agreement or don't get married. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's very true. You know, if you can't afford something, don't buy it. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of people out there materialistic that way, and and well, if you in, if in you July, and if I approached my wife with that, um, she would sign it. No, no equivocation. Then why didn't you do it before you got married? Uh, just you know what, I just never really thought about it. I never we and I don't have a lot of money either. You know, I'm making fifty, sixty well, thousand. Use it, but you use it a prepaid legal service. Yeah, that's you <laughs> in Sacramento here that's about 30 bucks a month. All right, well. <laughs> all right, so you could have gone to them at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I did think about it though. I was thinking about getting it done before we thinking got Thinking about but... doing something is in no way uh, like doing something. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I was actually looking into those post um agreements as well. Well, you should look into that, but again, keep in mind that uh uh, you might find a great attorney to do one for you that'll stand up, but I've been told by good divorce attorneys, not that they don't work, but that we don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I haven't really looked into it, so I don't know, but I thought I'd throw it out there to see what that would, you know, what people thought about that. Well, I'd look into it if I were you. I'll tell you that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's Jeff. Um. Love your show. Uh, Long-time listener. Uh, quick question. Mine's kind of the other side of the, the the coin there with the prenup. I signed a prenup with my wife before we got married. Um, she was a practicing um, a doctor, and she are now we're having problems. We do have two kids, and is it worth uh, trying to get the prenup thrown out? Uh, so, wait a minute, are you home taking care of the kids while she's a doctor? No. Uh, she has sold her practice, and I am at work. We've obviously taken a pretty uh, huge uh, pay cut as far as that goes. But um, Isn't it convenient that she did that about the time your marriage started going south? Well, she did this a while ago. She stayed home to have uh, take care of the kids until they went to school. So now you would get screwed. Well, that's one of my questions is, is it worth pursuing the... Well, the I don't prenup? know what the prenup says. You really have to ask an attorney. Okay. This is, um, okay. I, I haven't read your prenup. And I, if I read it, I'm not an attorney. Yeah. I'm just our, a guy our, who's our had... I'm a guy who's prenup. had experience with prenups because I've been married and divorced using prenups. Okay. Are they worth... Or do they usually hold up in court as, as is? 
Uh, I don't know about Nevada where you are. Uh, I know in California, I've been told by attorneys that they're holding up more and more. And it depends on the circumstances under which they were signed, whether they were signed under duress, if both sides were represented by legal counsel. Uh, this is another good question for an attorney. Okay. But, pal, don't cheap out. You shouldn't call a radio talk show for legal advice. You should hire an attorney and ask these questions. All right. I know you're trying to resist spending that money, but you really should do it. Well, it's not a money thing. Um, what it is is, I guess it's a spite thing. What's a spite thing? Wanting to have that prenup thrown out. You want to have it thrown out? Yes. For spite? For spite. Because why? Why not? <laughs> so you just decided now that you hate your wife and now you need no, to... No, the no. Why, do, why do you feel spiteful against your wife? I don't understand. I feel spiteful because she's going to take me to the cleaners with the two kids and... But, but did, did, did you already discuss divorce with her? We've discussed it um, very limitedly. No, you need an attorney. Okay. Got to get one. Thanks, Tom. Sooner than later, because who knows? She might file those papers. You won't even know they're coming. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. All right. He won't, but he should. But he won't. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. How much money does your husband make? He makes 500000 a year. All right, so you are pretty attractive. Yeah, I'm pretty attractive. Yeah, you're really attractive. Yeah, I'm really attractive. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. Uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. And we're talking about that ridiculous $184 million divorce judgment out of Chicago. All the woman had to do was be there and have dinner with the guy. And after dinner, take walks, listen to him talk. Boom. It's Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yep. Alan here. Yes, I know. I just said that. Is this Tom? Did you want to talk to Tom? Oh, don't do that whole thing with me. I know it's Tom. Well, don't start with the speakerphone and all that stuff. Come on, we tell you not to use it. No, you're not on speaker. You're not on speaker. I was when we started, and that's why you're all confused. Listen, Tom, I'm a first-time, long-time I'm a fellow atheist, mm -hmm. a fellow King season ticket holder. Yes. And right now, your show is more relevant than ever for me. Really, thank you for doing what you do. I love your show, and I'm now I'm going to listen to it every day. Go on. Um, I've been married just under 10 years, and my wife decided that she'd rather be with her new boyfriend than try and work out, work on her marriage. And uh, so we're breaking up, like, immediately, and I do have a prenup. And I took it to a lawyer, and he said, yeah, it's, it's very enforceable. Took it to a very good, very good lawyer. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And, you know, at the time we did it, I said to her, you know, if things never work out, I'd like to, you know, I think we should have a prenup because you never know what might happen. And I, and I never did ever want a divorce. And I still don't today, but it's happening to me, and I have to live with it. And I'm, I'm really glad I did that prenup. And... Um, one, advice, one piece of advice I'd give to listeners is that if you do want a prenup, which, you know, as you advise people to do, the way to probably do it is you don't want to spring it on them, like, after you're engaged or close to the wedding. A better idea probably would be to, like, when the relationship first starts developing, probably just kind of drop it as a hint and say, you know, if I ever got married, I definitely would want a prenup because that's... I think that's the fair way to Oh, I think that's that definitely the way to go. Uh, but people don't do that because guys want to get laid, and they're afraid if they say that, they're not going to get laid. Well, yeah, maybe I would say maybe after, like, a relationship develops more than, you know, after maybe a month or two. And, you know, if you think that marriage is an option. In the See, future. I think you have to already have gotten in her pants. <laughs> yeah. already got in her consciousness. 
Yep. But not so much that she has got you in a situation where you're in love and you can't live without it. Now's the time to, to go in for the kill. Yep. Yep. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't, I didn't mean to go. I, I, I wouldn't consider it going in for the kill. I just said, look, if we ever do break up, which I hope will never happen, I think it's the fair thing to do. And she agreed with that at the time. Now, of course, she's saying, um, you know, you, you, you forced me to sign it. That, that's not true. Did she have an attorney? She does. Did she back then? Uh, yes, she did. And the attorney read the agreement and negotiated yep. with your attorney? Yep. Well, how could you force her to sign it? Exactly. And it even stipulated in the prenup, it said something about, even though wedding invitations are already sent, I fully acknowledge that I am of sound mind and agree to this. It, it actually specifically said something about the wedding invitations. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy I have it because I've, I'm pretty successful. And, um, you know, it's, it's like you say, it's a business arrangement. So this is just, it's a, it's a business contract at this point. No, now you're seeing that the hard way, of course. I'm sorry you have to see it the hard way. Keep in mind, I saw it the hard way, too. Yeah. Four times, huh? Yes. Well, we have two kids, so um, we are going to be in each other's lives for a long time. So, Just as long as you're uh, sticking to giving her uh, child support and that's it. And uh, who's going to have custody? Have you decided that? We're going we're gonna to do half and half, and she's, we're getting along very well, and it's, it's, we're, you know, we're trying to be strong for the children and, and, and just be good parents at this point and move our, move our separate ways. I mean, it's very sad. I was, I was deeply in love with my wife, and I am very, very hurt right now. And I know in time I'll feel a lot better, but, you know, I didn't see this coming at all. I mean, one, How did you find out about it? Um, you know, I wasn't even suspicious. I was uh, looking at the phone bill because it was kind of excessively high, and I saw every night multiple calls, no, every night long calls to the same number for about a month, and I thought, uh-oh, because my wife's not the kind of yak on the phone with her girlfriends. So, you know, I kind of knew that there was some, some, some guy in the picture, and so I asked her about it. And she copped to it? Um, not right away, but yeah, she did. And how did she meet that guy? Through a dance class. Dance, dance, yeah, dance class. What kind of dancing? Like, um, like partners dancing. Yeah, and you couldn't or wouldn't go, and so she got passive aggressive and decided to find another dance partner. No, she never asked me to go. It wasn't something I've never been interested in that kind of thing, and she never asked me to go. But you know what? I knew, I knew when she went to that that there, it was a sexually charged environment. That type of that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't want to be a controlling husband. I said, go, have fun. You know, I trust you. I didn't even say I trust you, but I thought it, you know. I really did. I don't know why you trusted her. Who's she going to dance with? Well, you know, you know, Tom, I, I'd hope all us guys out there would honor the guy code and not go after married chicks. But but uh, we, guys don't do that. Guys do that. To, you hear the guys call in here all the time. They do it to their own friends. Yeah. See, that's 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 wrong. That. You know well, what? Yeah, but you see, yeah, but... all right, but you, you can't worry about things you can't control. Yeah. All right, and it's wrong, but it's the way it is. When a woman wants to go out to dance classes without you, that's a red flag. Yeah. It's a red flag because she's going to want to dance with somebody. Nobody takes dance lessons and then has no intention of dancing. Well, what should I have done in that situation? You have to ask her why she feels the need to go to a dance class. It's something I love. I really enjoy it. Yeah, but who are you going to dance with? Another guy. And were you oh, another guy? And uh, what? Uh, what do you think that guy wants? Yeah, you know, I start asking. I, I actually did. You know what? You're absolutely right. And I actually did have that conversation with her. And I said, you know, guys only want one thing. And if they if they act like they don't, they're just they're lying to you. Right. And she says, I know this, and she she did know it. So she was going because she was looking to meet a guy. That's, I don't know if I, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I know I, she, she does actually enjoy dancing. That is a big part of it. Yeah, but so. part, part of dancing is having physical contact with another person. Yeah. People are not doing the Watusi in a dance class. You know what I'm talking about? All right, so I, I'd love to know what I could have done differently. Should I have said? I'm not saying you could have done something differently. What I'm saying is it's a red flag, and then you have to go into red flag mode at that time. 
And for me, red flag mode means I'm on your phone bill. I'm on your computer. <laughs> yeah. I'm going through your email. You know, I wanted to respect her privacy. As she well, was well that's there. meow, meow, meow. You wanted to respect her privacy. Yeah. You know, you're married. You're not supposed to have privacy. That's true. That's I agree. I mean, we are supposed to be a team. This is why I think marriage is a joke, because nowadays it's too easy, especially for women, to cheat. It's too easy. So, so what? So now I'm 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 now single for the first time in 12 years, and that's why, I, like I said earlier, I'm going to be listening to your show quite a bit and uh, try and learn from you. I don't know if I'm. I don't want to say. I do actually like talking to women too, but I am going to use some of your techniques the best I can. I think you're going to have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, you know, we have two kids, and uh, you know, I'm 38, and um, I have a different, you know, phase of my life to, to walk into right now. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, good luck to you. Thank you. We'll see what happens. You actually, you actually met my wife once. We, uh, it was uh, three years ago. We were at the Beverly Hills uh, Country Club, the tennis one, and there was some wine tasting party. Do you remember that one? Yes. Yeah, my wife was pregnant at the time, and mm. I told you I was a fan. And I said, "Look how beautiful my wife is." See, not all pregnant, not all pregnant women are, you know, uh, you know, uh, unattractive. And you said, "Uh huh, uh huh," and you just nicely shook her hand and met her. It's my gig. I meet five hundred people a day. <laughs> Yep, yep. Well, thank you for everything you do, and uh, you you now have a, a, a newly loyal fan, just a, a, a renewed a renewed fan base from me. Well, thank you for that, Alan. Now everybody knows I'm at the Beverly Hills Country Club. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Valerie on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Valerie. I love you. Well, thank you. Thank you all the time when I pick my kids up from school. Uh, um, I just wanted to say, um, I feel like women do deserve half if they end up divorced. Like in my case, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I work really hard, and I don't get paid, but my husband works hard, and I work hard. You know, I take my practice, do homework with him. My daughter gets up every morning at 630 and I feel like if he were to leave me or if we were to get divorced or anything happened, I do deserve, you know, half and I don't see why you, you know, it, it sounds like you're so, you know, women don't deserve that. And maybe well, I think it depends on how much money there is. I, th I think $184 million is excessive. That's true. That's true. But nothing makes me more angry when, when people insinuate, oh, you stay home, you, you know, what you do all day or like you don't work, you must just have all this free time. Oh, no, I know it's very hard work. The reason, by the way, may I say the reason I don't have children, the reason I don't have children is because... Yeah. I know how hard it is. Well, and some women might not have gone to school or give up their career because both, you know, him and her want children. And then if the husband wants divorce later, then I think in that case she should get half because she could have been working. Well, I still think, though, that people people should have uh, they should have a conversation about how much money that's worth before they get married. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, you know what? You should have said to your husband, you know what? I want to put this down in writing. Because I think I'm worth thirty thousand a year, or forty thousand a year, or here's what I would be making if I was working. So if you want me to stay and take care of the kids, here's my, how much I want. Well, anyone that gets married doesn't really think they're going to get divorced, so I guess they're not thinking in that you know that mindset. But you're right. Well, I don't know why they think that. I, you know, as I always say on this show, what are the odds you'll have a car accident? Yeah. What are the odds? What is it? I don't know. Oh, well, when's the last time you had one? Never. Never. You've been driving for how many years? Oh, 15. 280 days a year, probably, every weekday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, times 15. Yeah. That's 4,200 days without an accident. Let's say it's 4,200 to one. But you have car insurance, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But the odds of your marriage ending are one in two. Right. Why would you have a prenup? Yeah, that's a good point. I'm, but I'm just, you know, speaking up for all of those women out there. Like we quote unquote do nothing. That's why I had to call because it. And I know you haven't exactly said it like that, but I'm just saying it. It isn't. I don't, but I'm. But I'm not insinuating that. I know you're I know not you're doing not. nothing. 
But if what you're doing is you're childless and what you're doing is you're having uh, walks uh, 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 after dinner and he's telling you about his business, I don't think that's worth $184 million. I, I just don't. There. I hear you there. I do. Right. I agree with that. All right. Thank you, dear. Appreciate the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.